we have entered the Aquarian Age. The Aquarian Age is a particular moment in time and it had to be designed so it could be replicated from anywhere and without with all the changes that happened. So it's got nothing to do with the stars, got nothing to do with the planets. It's got to do with something that remains constant. And that is the intersections of three separate planets. And that determines that the Aquarian Age started on the vernal equinox of the year 2000. It takes 12 years to fully integrate that. We're up to year nine. Year, month nine, year nine. And guess what? It's getting tougher. You're going to have to change. This is a period of change. Mm -hmm. And what is happening is people are starting to feel the pressure of change. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And guess what? Nobody will change unless the conditions are such that they cannot stay where they are. And even then, a lot of people will resist. They will resist change unless someone can tell them what the benefits are for themselves. So, with all my background, science, uh, hypnosis, NLP, therapy, uh, astrology, channeling, blah, blah. What I have come to realize is that I'm a change agent. And change happens when there are five factors come into play. And it's taken a The first of those factors is called intention. If you want to change, you have to have an intention. Many of you will probably work in the corporates and as you've seen corporate change. Corporate change never has any intention. They don't really want to change. They want what we want to do when we have no intention is we want to keep everything the same and pretend. So intention comes with we haven't got it, it's all about pretense. The next one is attention. If you want to change something, you've got to put your attention on it. You know, you've got to go, this is what I want to do, I want to change, and I'm going to keep my attention on what I'm doing. I'm not going to spread it into whole different areas. If I spread it out, what happens? I create confusion. Mm -hmm. That's, the, you know, I, I say these things, is there anybody who's ever been confused? <laughs> yeah, guess what? No attention. The next one, to change something, you've got to have the skills. You know? If you don't have the skills and you're trying to change something, and you go, I'm trying to change and I don't know what I'm doing, what it creates is it creates anxiety. So you get stressed out. Does anyone relate to this? Okay. The next one is called a decision. If you want to change, you have to decide what you're going to change to. I'm just thinking, what does that create? <coughs> you know, you always worry to forget, I'm going to forget you, huh? And the last one is you have to have the resources. <coughs> you know what the resources are? Time, money, and energy. There are a few other things, like if you've got to run you know, a marathon, it's good to have two legs. Right? <laughs> so there are other things plus those, but it's usually time, money, and energy. What happens if you don't have time, money, and energy? No, you've got no resources. <coughs> you end up 
What is this thing called reservations? You know, again, it's another big thing in the, in, in the corporate business world. You know, we want to make a change, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and you've got to do it, or we're not going to give you any time, money to do it. No, take the resources away, and that will stymie you then if you want to change it. So, <clears throat> my job as a change agent, right, is to help people to get their intentions right. You know, to actually decide that what you're going to do, where your direction is. Right? We have to have a direction, and we have to set our intention on going in that place. Knowing where you want to end up, right, as a trainer, that's when I teach you skills, because you have to have the skills to get there. You have to know how to wire your system so it doesn't stymie you, doesn't shoot yourself in the foot. Most people have got beliefs that are destructive, right? You go, this is what I want to do, and you keep going down that way, and you get almost there, and you get to go down, boom, and you blow your foot off. Right? And you go, oh, no, I didn't get there. Yeah. So, what I do is I have lots of uh, classes, there's the brochures on in most people's seats. I do one-on-one you know, -on -one counselling, one-on-one -on -one, um, channeling sessions which are really good for direction, they're really good for, um, for things like health issues, for, for what is going on behind the scenes. You know, because health is a belief system problem. Everything originates from the goals. Uh, I'm starting to do workshops that are actually integrating work with them so that what you can do, and I've got one next weekend, next Sunday, I'm going to do one which is called Opening the Spiritual Window, which really is uh, an exploration of what spirituality actually is. Because right here, in this room, amongst all of these seemingly separate beings, there is one entity called an us. Now, one being is here, and we are all cells in that being. So when we talk about unity, we mean <coughs> Right? And the only thing that separates you from the next person is your judgments about self and others. Yeah? So you go, I'm a man, he's a man. Now, I'm a man, she's a woman. Now, dark hair, white hair, blonde, now, curly, straight. Uh, we have uh, small, large, tall, short. It's myriads of these linguistic ways of describing someone else so that we can be different from them. And yet I'm going to tell you that the Aquarian age brings us into unity. And that unity is where we see everyone else as self. And everything we do, we do because this is another part of myself yeah? and everything that I can do to help someone grow, I'm watching myself evolve. Then, thank you for listening. <laughs>